the, let's actually, or ra rather factor some trinomial using the double bubble method. Again, write the trinomial in ascending order of powers and find factors of the independent term that add up to the middle coefficient. Well, so we have a bunch of exercises here. Notice all, almost all of them have coefficients of one. It, and in some cases, there is trinomials that not, do not, or rather do not have a coefficient of one but we can still use the double bubble method. Well, in the meantime, let's talk about these two. Okay, so here we open the double bubble like this. We have the x and the other x. We need to find factors of the number 16 that add up to 10. What are those two factors? Any ideas? 8 and 2. 8 and 2 plus 8 plus 2, and we're done. Of course, you can verify your result by foiling. That's going to be... Well, let me do it. So that'll be x times x, that's x squared, and then x times 2, that's plus 2x, and then 8 times x plus 8x, and 8 times 2 equals to 16. And combining like terms, x squared plus 10x plus 16. And that's actually our original problem, right? I mean, you don't have to do this every single time you're factoring. However, uh, just in case you're curious about it, you can always go ahead and do that. Let's look at another one. x squared plus 5x plus 6. Okay, so double bubble and find factors of 6 that add up to 5. What are those two factors? 2 and 3. 2 and 3, so plus 2. And actually, the sign matters, all right? Sign matters in this case. Especially, and that's, I'm talking about letter C. Okay, so factors, okay, double bubble, X and X. Okay, factors of 35 that add up to negative 12. So uh, here, um, the, the one, number one thing you need is your multiplication tables. Consider all the different ways you can factor a number and see if it works so that the addition of those two factors gives us the middle coefficient. Let it. Which one? Six times five. Six times five, that's a 30. All right, but you're close, you're close, you're close. Negative seven, seven negative five. Okay, seven and five, because seven times five is 35. But we want the addition to be negative, yet we want the product to be positive. How about both negatives? Because the product between two negatives, it's a positive, and the addition of two negatives is an even more negative number, right? How about letter D? This one might be a little tricky because the number 24 has a bunch of ways to be factored. Uh, I can think of, well, 1 times 24, well, that's not going to work. How about 2 times 12? Well, 12 times, no, that's not going to add up to negative 11. That adds up to 14, rather. Um, 6 times 4, that's 6 plus 4, that's 10. No, that's not going to work either. Nicholas? Uh, it was negative 8 and negative 3. Negative 8 and negative 3. Negative 8 and negative 3. Yes. That's a negative 11, and the product of the two, it's a positive value, all right? <clears throat> now, be careful with something like letter E and letter F. Uh, for examples A through D, we got trinomials for which we have the highest degree term to be a quadratic, and the leading coefficient equals to 1. However, letter E. Uh, looks a little different. Although that it's a trinomial, it is not yet in the form that we want in order to treat it, to give, to give it the double bubble treatment here. However, every, like we discussed last time, every time you have a polynomial, the first thing you want to do is check if you have a GCF. Check if you can factor the greatest common factor, right? So, Okay, looks like we can factor out the greatest common factor. Notice, well, if we, if we look at all the coefficients, 5, 30, and 35, the smallest of them is 5, and the other coefficients are multiples of the leading coefficient. That means we can factor out the number 5 itself, 
and also we can factor 1 power of x. That's going to leave us with the following, that is x squared uh, minus 6x and then minus 7. Now, in this case, we're going to do the double bubble in for the trinomial that we have in parentheses here. That is, don't forget this 5x right here. Keep writing it and do the, uh, the double bubble part. That is x and x. So now we look for factors of negative 7 that add up to negative 6. Negative 7 and 1. Negative 7 and 1. Let's see. Negative 7 and plus 1. Okay. Yes, negative 7 plus 1 is negative 6 and negative 7 times 1. That equals to negative 7 indeed. And we're done with this one. This is fully factored. All right. Now, let's see. What about letter F? 2n squared minus 38n plus 80. And again, in this case, this polynomial, this trinomial, is not of the form x squared plus bx plus c because we have something other than 1 in the leading coefficient. That is, in this case, it's a 2. However, if in this case that can be factored, well, let's go ahead and do it and then write the remaining polynomial and find a possibility to factor that other polynomial. Otherwise, well, let's just leave it. All right, let's see. So number one, to begin with, factor out a 2. That's going to leave us with n squared uh, minus 19n plus 40. Now, we need to find factors of, what's that, of 40 that add up to negative 18. Well, 40, okay, that's 40 times 1. No, it's not going to work. 20 times 2, no, that doesn't add up to negative 19. Uh, what else? Any other factors? 8 times 5, that's uh, 40. They add up to 13, not 19. Any other possibility, maybe? Uh, so 40 times 5, so 10 times 4, 10 times 4, that's 14, no, it's not going to work. Looks like that's about it, right? The only thing we have, it's only as far as the greatest common factor, and that's very common. That's one possibility, all right? <clears throat> Let's see, what's next? Okay. Now let's move on to the other to the other group of factoring trinomials. That is the trinomials of the form ax squared plus bx plus c. Now, so here is the thing. Uh, we already looked at some examples of, for which we have a leading coefficient different than one. However, in, in those cases, like the ones before, we were able to factor it out as a GCF, and then whatever we were left with inside of the parentheses, we can simply go about the double bubble method. However, if we look at this trinomial here, 2x squared plus 11x plus 15, look at the smallest of the coefficients. The remaining coefficients are not multiples of the smallest of the coefficients, so no, the the greatest common factor, it's not going to work and we won't be able to use the double bubble as, uh, as we want. I mean, we, we, can't, we, we will sort of use it, but not the way we used it before. All right. Uh, by the way, there is a bunch of ways to, uh, to, factor, to factor trinomial for which the leading coefficient is different than one and can't be factored as a GCF. Uh, in high school, you may have learned the guess and check or trial and error. If you're comfortable using that method, well, then that's fine. Go ahead and use it. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you how to use the diamond method, which is a more um, step by step, so to speak that will for sure lead you into the final answer rather than guessing and checking because we're going to get ugly numbers with these ones and suddenly the numbers uh, are not going to be easy to guess by just or to obtain by just trial and error. So I think a method should work a lot better rather than guessing and checking. 
And well, so let's go ahead and have a look at this polynomial. So number one, how does the how does the diamond method work? Well, so let's draw a diamond first of all, and this is what we're going to do. We're going to multiply the leading coefficient times the constant term, that is 2 times 15. That's going to give us a result of 30, all right? That's going to give us 30 as a result. And all we're going to do here is bring down the middle coefficient to the bottom part of the diamond. Okay, so we're, what we're going to do, we're going to fill in the blanks with factors of 30 that are up to 11 in a similar way that we did <clears throat> for the double bubble method the same way. So uh, any ideas as to what are factors of, um, of 30 that are up to 11? Five and six. All right. Okay. Well, number one, actually, let me move this to the other side. I need this space. Okay. So, <clears throat> Five and six, or six and five, it doesn't matter, all right? It doesn't really matter which one is it, which, or in which order. Now, here is the thing, a very common mistake is to just go ahead, do x plus five times x plus six, because we're obtaining these numbers via the double, via checking, via finding the factors of the product that add up to the middle coefficient. But no, that's not correct because if you distribute this back, that's going to give us x times x. What about the coefficient 2? Where is it? So, no, we're going to do something else with this. What we do with these two numbers is to split the middle term. into the addition of these two in accordance with the numbers we got. 5x plus 6x adds up to 11x still. All right? So let me write the whole thing down. That's going to be 2x squared plus 5x plus 6x plus 15. And well, so we have a trinomial that contains four terms. Okay, so any ideas? What do we do with a polynomial with four terms from last time? We take common. What is that again? We take common like x squared. Uh huh. Uh, from the first portion, and from the second, we take three. Mm hmm. All right. So, but in general, how do we call that method? Factoring, yeah, well, it's factoring, but I mean, we, which of the methods? It's one of the, of the ones we discussed last time. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. Well, it involves finding a, lo a bunch of GCFs, right? Grouping. grouping, factor by grouping. So we're going to group the first two terms, and I'm going to group the remaining two terms. All right? <clears throat> so that's going to be, well, the, the GCF in the first group is only the x to x plus 5. And the GCF in the second group only, it looks like only the number 3. It's the GCF, and that's going to leave us with 2x plus 5 also. Now, if you did this right, you should get this the, the following way. So number 1, we've got, a G, we've got a couple of GCFs, a GCF of every single group. And then, so... <clears throat> Then in the end, we will be able to see this very last GCF to x plus 5 to x plus 5. And that's going to be, okay, 2x plus 5 times x plus 3. And that's our final answer. So as we can see from, from just by having a different leading coefficient that can't be factored as a GCF changes the whole game here, isn't that the result won't be obtained in an in a, as in an immediate fashion as we did it in the in the previous method by the double bubble method. Yes? So uh, it's, uh, these stages such as the diamond idea, uh, it's start off with the all right, so let's look at letter B, 3x squared minus x minus 4. Well, again, if we look at the leading coefficient of 3, unfortunately, we cannot factor it out because that's a negative 1, that's a 4, and neither negative 1 nor 4 are multiples of 3, all right? So we will have to deal with the diamond method here. Okay, let's draw the diamond, and let's multiply again. 
3 times a negative 4, okay? Multiply, uh, and 3 times a negative 4 with sine 12, and bring down the middle coefficient of negative 1, all right? So there is a negative 1 coefficient here multiplying with the x, all right? You don't have to write that negative 1, uh, but if it works for you just for visual purposes, go for it. That's fine, okay? I'll leave it recorded like this, so when you go back and watch this video, uh, it serves as a reminder of how it works, all right? So now we're going to look for factors of negative 12 that add up to negative 1. Any ideas? 3 and 4. Okay, let's start with 3 and 4. However, one of them has to be negative so that the product is negative and also the addition is negative. The 4 has to be, the largest has to have the negative sign so the addition outputs a negative number. But again, don't double bubble yet. First, factor, or rather break this down like this, 3x minus 4x, so we use this 3 and negative 4 to write 3x and negative 4 in accordance with these two coefficients here. All right, let's see, so we're going to have four terms right here. That is, I mean, yes, four, ter four terms, 3x squared plus 3x minus 4x minus 4, and again, how about we do a factor by grouping? Group the first two terms, group the remaining two terms, and well, treat a, a group individually, each group individually, that is, find the GCF on the first group, and then find the GCF on the second group. All right? Now, let's see. So, finding the GCF on the, on the first group, that's a 3x times x plus 1, and the GCF on the second group, notice how the negative 4 is common to both. So minus 4, x plus 1 also. And again, you can see another greatest common factor, and this will be uh, x plus 1 times 3x minus 4. And that's our final result in here. Right. And again, you want, want to foil this in order to verify your work, but you don't have to do that. I did it only once just so, so you can see how factoring is really the backwards process of using the foiling or, or the distributive. So one more. <clears throat> Okay, so for letter C, 4x squared plus 5x minus 6, notice how the smallest of the coefficients, in this case 4, uh, well, it's not greatest common factor with the 5 and the negative 6. So, well, in this case, we need to go through the diamond method. So, let's see. Let's see about the diamond method. Number one, so, so what we're going to do again Multiply 4 times negative 6, that's the leading times the constant term, and that's going to give us a negative 24. And in the bottom, we're going to write the middle coefficient, which in this case is 5. Now, our task here is to find factors of negative 24 that add up to 5. And be careful with this one because the number 24 has multiple ways to, to be factored. But of course, you want, to, you want to go with the one that best fits, which is multiply to negative 24, but the two numbers add up to positive 5. Any ideas about this one? Eight and, negative eight and negative three, so eight and three. All right. However, we want the addition to be positive, so let's make the smallest of the two uh, negative numbers. So let me change the blue here. I mean yellow. Eight and negative three. All right. So again, we're going to use these numbers eight x minus three x to break up the middle term and make this look like um, like a four term one. So that's four x squared plus eight x plus, or rather minus three x minus six. And again, we have a four term polynomial for which we are gonna use factor by grouping, all right? <clears throat> 
So let's see. We're gonna do this. Let's group. And let's do the grouping. And let's see. Uh, so the GCF in the first group, that's a 2x, I mean 4x, not just 2x, it's 4x, and that leaves us with x plus 2. And the GCF on the second group is a negative 3, x plus another 2. Now, did you see this x plus 2 and x plus 2? All right. Uh, so that's going to give us the next GCF of x plus 2 times 4x minus 3 which I think this is what most of you got, all right? All right, uh, let me go back to, to the previous example. Uh, the previous example, uh, if you do it in a slightly different way, well, first of all, let me, let me move the diamonds because I need the space right here, okay. So, when you do the diamond part, uh, um, Let's say that instead of writing the diamond this way, you know, like this, let's say you write it the other way around. Okay, let me actually delimit all this and let me do the diamond again, the whole diamond again. So what about, okay, still negative 12, negative 1, what if instead you wrote it like negative 4 and 3, which is fine, all right? How is that going to change the remaining part of the process of factoring here? Now, check this out. So first of all, okay, let me write the polynomial again. 3x squared minus x minus 4, and that equals 2. Okay, in this case, I'm going to break this up as a negative 4x and 3x. In the, in, the upper, in the other order, by the way, all right? That is, I'm going to write this as a, as a four-term polynomial, 3x squared minus 4x, and then what is that? Uh, 3x plus 3x and minus 4. Now, and I'm, do, and I'm going over this because as I was walking around, some of you did try to do it on your own and you did it in this order. So, and again, we will group these two the same. Group them. And well, the GCF in the first group, what's the GCF in the first group, by the way? Help me with this one. X. Just X, okay? Just X. And that's because uh, for the first group, 4, which is the largest of the coefficients, is not a multiple of the smallest of the coefficients, which, which is 3. So that's just going to leave us with 3x minus 4. Let's close the parentheses. Now, here is the tricky part right here. Um, the GCF between 3x and negative 4. Positive 1. Positive 1. Well, it looks like, I mean, at first glance, there's nothing in common, right, between the 3 and the 4, and the first term contains x, the second term does not contain an x, so really the only common factor is the 1, so just put it as parentheses, 3x minus 1, and just for placeholding purposes, write an invi the invisible one that we have implied in the front of the parentheses, yes. 3x plus uh, negative 4. It will be 3x negative 4 in the second place. Negative, I don't know where the 1 come from. Where the 1 came from, let me, it's minus 4, right? Hmm? And now, we will be able to see it this way. And that's going to be 3x minus 4 and times x plus 1. Final answer. Uh, what did we get in this case? We just got those factors reversed, which is the same way, right? It's the same result. I mean, it's like 4 times 3, 3 times 4, same thing, right? And let's see. Of course, we have a bunch more of examples here. All right, letter D. Let's see what about letter D. 
Well, number one, this letter D has a combination of letters, more than one letter, and we have like these powers like all over the place. And also, oh, hold on, look at, uh, look at the coefficients. The coefficients also are going to have a greatest common factor this time. All right, between 12, 22, and 8, let's focus on the numbers for now. Uh, any ideas of what do they have in common? Just the numbers. They're all even numbers. Okay, 2, is that the greatest common factor? 4, maybe? No, not 4. 4 is only common to the 12 and the 8, but not the 22. So I agree with the 2. Now, between x's and y's, notice the x and the y's, the lowest power of them, because we factor the lowest power, that's x, y. And then we're going to left with the following. Now, question. 2 times what? Okay, what number times 2 equals to 12? What is that number? 6. six. That's going to leave us with x squared, all right? And then what's next? Um, so what number times 2 equals to 22? 11. 11. So minus 11 because the term is negative. And then what number times 2 equals to 8? Four, four. Plus 4, all right? So now we need to take care of this trinomial uh, on the side. And you know what? Every time you have a, you're in a situation like this in which you have a trinomial in parentheses with something else outside, uh, because we're going to use a bunch of parentheses. We already have parentheses to begin with. So my advice, uh, take this polynomial, this trinomial on the side and work on it on the side and then bring go back to the original problem and just write the result of it that is so 6x squared oops minus 11x plus 4 and i'm going to go with the diamond method here because that's what it is about all right so number one to begin with <coughs> six times four what is that going to be 24 and bring down the middle coefficient, which is negative 11. Now we're going to look for factors of 24. Oh, so they, they, they give us a positive 24, but the result when combining them together is negative 11. What are those two factors? 8 and 3. All right, so 8 and 3. All right, I mean, 8 times 3 equals to positive 24, but 8 plus 3 is not negative 11. So we need to fix these two numbers here, right? What do we do? They're both negatives, right? Both negative, negative 8, negative 3. All right. So again, we're going to use these two numbers to break up the middle term. That is negative 8x plus 3, or rather minus 3x, all right? And in this case, okay, how about, okay, let's write it down. That equals to 6x squared minus 8x minus 3x plus 4. And as usual, do the grouping. Do the grouping. And well, let's find the greatest common factor of the first group. Any ideas what's the greatest common factor of the first group? 2x, okay, we agree with 2x, times, okay, that's going to leave us with 3x plus, what is that, 2, no, 4, or minus 4, right, minus 4. Now, the tricky part here, what about the greatest common factor in the second group? Well, I can see that probably just bring it down the question was, do it the other way around? Yeah. Okay, because this looks weird to factor, right? That's a situation I was talking about before. So how about uh, I, we take a couple steps back instead? Okay, well, I'm glad this is being recorder, recorded so you can see it when you... When you go back, so let me write these numbers the other way around instead. Negative 3, negative 8. Let me change these coefficients. Negative 3 and negative 8. And instead, 
That's going to give us 6x squared minus 3x minus 8x plus 4, which this is going to be a way nicer one to factor. All right. <clears throat> so that'll be, uh, okay, the GCF in the first group have about 3x. And that's going to leave us with 2x minus 1. 2x minus 1. And what about the GCF in the second group? Okay, just, okay, if we factor out the 4, 4, okay, let's, that's going to be negative 2x plus 1, all right? However, the problem here is we have a 2x, we have a 1, we also have a 2x and we also have a 1. However, they are not in the, in the same uh, signed pattern. So in this case, uh, how about instead factor negative 4? That's 2x minus 1. And then you will be able to see the following. All right. And now this will be 2x minus 1 times 3x minus 4. Final answer. All right. Uh, we're not done with this one. This, we're just done with the side work. Remember, all this factoring of the trinomial was only a side trip, if you will, for this original problem, which in this case is going to be 2xy times this 2x minus 1, 3x times 3x minus 4. So our really final answer is going to be this one. So let me actually use an arrow to indicate that this is the factor form of that trinomial. All right, guys, I'll let you work on letter E. So again, we're going to do the factor by doing the diamond method. That is, multiply the leading coefficient times the constant term. And well, so let's create a diamond with this. That's going to be 6 times 6 which equals to 36 and just bring down the 13. Now we're going to bring, we're going to think of two numbers whose product is a number 36 and together add up to 13. Be careful with the number 36 because that number has multiple ways to be factored. But again, you're going to use the unique way in a way that we add it up. We add up those two numbers to give a 13. What is that? What are those numbers? Nine and four? Nine and four. All right. So we can break this up as a 9x plus 4x. And then that's going to be equal to 6x squared plus 9x plus 4x plus 6. And well, again, grouping, grouping these two, we're going to get the following. So that'll be... Uh, what's that? Uh, the GCF of the first group, which happens to be 3x, which leaves us with 2x plus 3. And then what about the GCF in the second group? What can we factor out of it? 2. And that's uh, 2x plus 3. Did you see the, the final GCF? And that's going to leave us with 3x, I mean 2x plus 3 first, times 3x plus 2. All right? So how about, okay, let's see, let's do, let's do the last two real quick. Okay, okay, let's do the diamond method for these two. Looks like some of you went ahead and finished them already, all right? So, but let's go ahead and look at them. Number one, fact, or rather multiply 18 times negative 2, that's a negative 36, and negative 9. Okay, 
Let's find factors of negative 6 that add up to negative 5. And this might be a little trickier than uh, the other way around. Because we already did the number 36 in the previous example. But this time we wanted negative, And we want them to add up to a different number. Any ideas? Negative 12 and 3. Negative 12 and 3. So 12 and 3. 12 times 3 is indeed uh, 36. It's one of the ways to factor it out. But in this case, we want the addition to be negative. That is, make the largest of them a negative number. All right. So I think I'm going to break them up, not in this order, but rather the other way. 3x and negative 12x. Because otherwise, it's going to be a disaster if we do it the other way. It's going to be, we're going to run into the tricky situations. The tricky situation, as, as I described it before. All right. What is that going to be next? Well, 18x squared plus 3x minus 12x and minus 2. And again, do the grouping. Do the factor by grouping. And then from here, how about, okay, the GCF of the first group, do we agree it's a 3x times, that's going to leave us inside of the parentheses with a 6x uh, plus 1. And what about the GCF in the second group? Negative 2. Negative 2. We can factor out a negative 2 times uh, 6x plus 1 also. Do you see the last GCF again? 6x plus 1. 6x plus 1. Well, that is 3x, or rather, for the, the GCF first, 6x plus 1, times 3x minus 2. And that's our final answer. If you, if you did it uh, with the numbers reverse, you might have gotten these two factors reverse. But again, it's the same. It's like uh, 4 times 5 or 5 times 4. Either way, it should work. And let's now look at the last one, letter G. Okay, again, diamond method. Diamond method, okay, let me draw the diamond first. And let's see. We're going to multiply 15 times negative 3. Uh, that's a negative 45, right? And just bring down the middle coefficient of 4. Now we need to find factors of negative 45 that are up to 4. 45 have different ways to be factored, so careful with that one, Corey. Uh, 9 and negative 5. 9 and negative 5, let's see if that works. 9 and negative 5, indeed, that works. 9 times a negative 5, um, it's equal to negative 45, and combined together, 9 minus 5 equals to 4. So let's see, what about it? So let me do the minus 5 at first. Otherwise, it's going to be a disaster if I go this way. So number 1, so that's um, negative 5x and 9x. That's going to be 15x squared plus 4x minus 3. Oh, hold on, no, no, it's not plus 4x, minus 5x plus 9x minus 3. And, well, what about it? How about we do grouping again? All right. And what's the GCF for the first group? 5x. 5, 5x, not just 5, so 5x. That's going to leave us, well, what number times 5 equals 15? Is that a 3x and minus 1? And the GCF in the second group? Positive 3. All right. I agree with positive 3. And that's going to leave us with 3x minus 1 also. Did you see the next GCF? All right. Now that's a 3x minus 1 times 5x plus 3. All right.